holidays are here and you're an intermittent faster, what do you do? I'm gonna talk about it today and share with you exactly how I approach the holidays, two different ways that you can approach them and give you permission to enjoy them even as an intermittent faster. I'm Jackie, I've been fasting for over three years. This will be my fourth holiday season that I'm gonna be an intermittent faster and I'm very much looking forward to it. Here's the cool thing, fasting is so flexible. I move my eating windows to the things that are important to me. That means Halloween parties, Thanksgiving dinners, Christmas Eve, New Year's Eve, Christmas Day, all the things I make room for and I really, really enjoy it. And I'm gonna give you permission to do the same and I'm gonna share with you my tips on how to get through the holiday season as an intermittent faster that's gonna be happy and not hungry. First off, I wanna share with you that you can get off schedule and still be successful as an intermittent faster. I generally fast a minimum of 18 hours every single day. However, that may not work every single holiday, and that's okay. I know what I do on a regular basis is far more important than a one-off, two-off day. So if you're invited last minute to a Friendsgiving and you suddenly want to participate and you didn't have your eating window planned for a certain time, go enjoy it. When you allow yourself to flex and you allow yourself to maybe have a shorter fast and a longer eating window, but enjoy a day, and then you move on and you get back to your normal, you're going to see that fasting allows you to make those flexible moves, but still continue to enjoy food and enjoy life. And isn't that what we're all after? This video is sponsored by Element. Element is one of my key factors in having successful down days before an up day. So if you're planning to do a down day before a holiday event or any fun up day of eating, one thing that makes it much easier is to make sure you don't have electrolyte deficiency or an imbalance and taking raw unflavored element in your longer fast can really help with that. For me personally, it helped keep away sore legs that I used to have in my fasts that were about one to two days beyond that 24 hour mark, I always would get sore legs and I no longer have that issue since I take Element in my longer fast. I do choose to have the raw unflavored instead of the flavors while I'm fasting and that's because I wanna keep up with the clean fast. The 1000 milligrams sodium, 200 milligrams potassium and 60 milligrams magnesium helps me to stay hydrated and feeling great during my down days so that I can really enjoy my up day. Right now, Element is offering my listeners a free sample pack with any order. That's eight single serve packets free with any Element order. This is a great way to try all eight flavors or share Element with a salty friend. Get yours at drinkelement.com slash fasting foodie. This deal is only available through my link. You must go to D-R-I-N-K-L-M-N-T dot com slash fasting foodie. Thank you so much to Element for sponsoring this video. If you have a day like Christmas Eve that's full of eating and you have Christmas Day that's full of eating and you're not able to do a down day and an up day and a down day and an up day because they're back to back and that means two days of longer eating windows, you're gonna be okay. You can be ho, ho, ho about those Christmas cookies and the eggnog two days in a row and get back to your normal fasting schedule and you're not gonna ruin all your progress. Again, what you do on a regular basis is far more important than what you do on the irregular, the holidays. And I do think the holidays are more special and worth having different eating windows if it's important to you. I love the holiday gatherings where I get to see aunts, uncles, cousins, grandparents, and part of that is their fun dishes that they make. I think of my Aunt Barb, she makes these cheesecake bars. When I go to my grandma's house, it's gonna be important to me to have Aunt Barb's cheesecake bar when I'm there. Or my other grandma makes cheesy potatoes. I love having her cheesy potatoes on our Christmas gathering at that side. I'm gonna move my eating window to accommodate those things, but guess what? Even if my plans don't go according to what I thought they would, and my eating window doesn't perfectly align with whatever family gathering, or if the dinner's running late, or we're last minute invited somewhere, if there are foods that I wanna participate in, at the holidays and it doesn't go exactly to what I thought the plan would be, I still give myself permission to go on a one-off basis, have a different fast, a different eating window and enjoy it. You can move things around without totally derailing your success. What you do on a regular basis far outweighs those one-off, two-off flexibilities. Do you wanna flex all the way from October to January? Absolutely not, but you can make room for the special events that happen. And the other way you can approach it, and this is what I try to do, but I can't always do it perfectly, 
is if I know I'm going to eat a lot on Halloween, I probably will. We'll probably have some sort of a fun dinner. We're going to go trick-or-treating. I might have a drink out while we're trick-or-treating and then sample candy when we get home. That kind of longer and more treat-filled eating window is not my normal. But guess what? I'm going to make sure that I have probably a down day on October 30th so that October 31st when I might go to the first grade party and the fifth grade party at my kid's school, I'm going to be able to have an eating window that's longer because it's an up day and I plan for it. And then if I'm eating from lunch at my kid's school all the way through dinner time, that up day was planned. Now, do I think that everyone has to plan every single holiday to be an up day, have a down day the day before? Absolutely not. We just talked about it. If things go off plan and you didn't get to plan for it, I still think it's important to give yourself the flexibility. But if you have the ability to do a down day and then an update, that is my preference because I like having it be planned. I like to have the structure of the down day and the freedom of the update. It feels really good for me. And then it feels Feels like I'm doing it according to plan. I like that, but it's not always the case. Whether you give yourself the flexibility to enjoy the holiday on a one-off basis and you know it's not going to derail you because you're fast on the normal everyday regular basis far outweighs the flexibility of this one-off, two-off during the holidays. Or if you do the planned down days and up days, I really hope you have an amazing holiday season. If you want more information on down days and up days and alternate day fasting, you can play this playlist right here where I go into detail each of them and why I do them. But again, don't feel like you're, you have to plan it or you can't enjoy the holidays. I'm here to give you permission to do things a little differently than normal. Enjoy your holiday. Thank you so much for watching. Ciao, Don and ciao.